thank you for joining us today. Um, for those who um, don't know me, my name is Darlene McLennan and I'm the manager of the Australian Disability Clearinghouse on Education and Training, or ADSET for short. I just want to start by letting you know that this webinar is being live captioned. To activate the captions, you can um, click on the CC button in the toolbar that is located either at the top or the bottom of your screen. We also have captions available um, in a browser um, and the team will add that to the chat um, box now for you to access them there. Okay, I'm on Luchawida, Tasmanian Aboriginal land, and in the spirit of reconciliation, Adzed and I respectfully acknowledge Luchawida nations um, that Adzed is um, hosted on, um, and we'd like to pay respect um, and um, to all the Aboriginal and Torres Strait people and recognise the Aboriginal history and culture of the land and pay respects to elders past and present and to the many Aboriginal people that did not make elder status. Also, we want to acknowledge all the countries participating in this meeting and also acknowledge the elders and ancestors and their legacies to us and any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people participating in the webinar. We have enabled the chat function, so I encourage you to identify where you are today and on what land you're coming to us from. Today, the um, webinar is accessibility in my um, Office 365, Inclusive Isn't Elusive, which is a great title. Um, it's very exciting to have Andrew, um, I have to pronounce it now, I'm trying to come up with Bowser, Blouser <laughs> um, from Microsoft. In the 90 minute session, you'll learn about the simple and powerful tools that are built into Microsoft Office Suite to help create and access content. Um, just another um, few housekeeping um, details before I start. The webinar is being um, captioned by Bradley Reporting. The wonderful Amy's doing that for us and will be recorded and be available on Adsit in the coming days. If you have any technical difficulties, you can email us at admin at adsit.edu. Um, Andrew's going to talk to us about 70 for 70 to 80 minutes, but he will hopefully remember to stop occasionally and we might check the Q&A box um, just so that we can um, engage in the content that he's actually speaking about before he moves on to something else. We ask that you put the um, questions into the Q&A. It's easier for us to um, manage those questions. I think we'll also have enabled the upvoting so you can upvote for your favourite question. If you want to chat with us or all um, everybody else who's joining us today, please use the chat box. Um, so just to re 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 refresh that, the questions you want asked of Andrew in the Q&A box, but to chat generally amongst yourselves and with, with all of us, please add that to the chat box and make sure you choose um, you know, all panellists and attendees. All right, I think that's it for the housekeeping. I'll come back at different points to ask the questions from the Q&A box, but now it's over to you, Andrew. Thank you so much for your time. Fantastic. And, and thank you everyone for attending uh, today's session and having me here. Uh, so yes, this is inclusive, is an elusive. Uh, and today we'll be focusing on accessibility within that uh, with AI and Microsoft and Office Windows 365. Now it is a lot to uh, take in over 90 minutes and I appreciate that uh, as a secondary high school teacher myself uh, but this is designed to to be a play and pause event so as you heard it is being recorded so I am going a little bit too fast and I apologize due to the interest of time you will be able to get a uh, recorded aspect of this and then maybe play me at half speed and then pause and go and explore some of the uh, aspects that I'm demonstrating today but I will do my absolute best to uh, slow down and answer as many questions as I possibly can. Now, to introduce myself, my name is Andrew Bowser. I'm an education success manager. I'm a middle-aged male wearing a blue Microsoft shirt, uh, hedgehog-like spiky brown hair, blue eyes, and my contact details are there on screen. So my role at Microsoft is to upskill uh, users in higher education at secondary and primary education across uh, ANZ. So that is Australia and New Zealand. Uh, and that's everything from using Minecraft to make worlds and spatial learning more accessible to aiding SLSOs, so student liaison support officers, teachers or leadership 
to transform their school with office. And that does include accessibility. So my contact details are there on screen. I may not get to everybody's question today, but I promise you uh, they will be emailed me to me and I will find the appropriate answers if uh, we either don't get time or I need to do a bit of homework on some of the questions. Microsoft is a very big space, so please don't be afraid to ask those questions. I'd also just like to acknowledge the traditional land in which I'm presenting from today, which is the Awapakal land uh, here in sunny Newcastle. I'd like to acknowledge the role of elders past and present and their future importance to Aboriginal Australia. Now, I have a lovely little session agenda here. I'll try and touch base on as many of these topics as possible. I am going to apologize in advance. I am naturally a very fast speaker. So I apologize to your closed captioner right here, right now. Um, but I'm very excited to share where we currently are with some of the tools that you have at your disposal around accessibility. So we'll have a look at everything from the overview of the landscape where Microsoft currently sits, uh, AI and accessibility, which is very exciting. I'm going to do some live demos with Copilot and show you the art of possible. Uh, then I will touch base, obviously, on Windows. Ease of access and accessibility is a bit of a staple, being Windows the most dominant operating system in the world. Uh, accessibility plays a huge role in its design. And we'll have a look at accessibility in Office. Now, our mission, obviously, at Microsoft is to empower every person and organization on the planet to achieve more. I was a secondary high school teacher and, and I worked with a lot of obviously students with accessible needs. Even I myself have accessible needs uh, to an extent. So uh, I'm gonna share some of those uh, tools that we use and some of those tools that you actually have access to today, which is really exciting, especially the AI aspect. So we try to promote independent learning at Microsoft, everything from learning, visual, hearing, mobility, neurodiversity and mental health. And I'll be uh, basically touching base on some of the tools to support things like dyslexia and dysgraphia and low vision, blind, colorblind, but also some of the research we're currently doing around uh, aspects of such as epilepsy uh, and mental health. And it basically can be around the processing of information that can be as simple as your accessible need that you may need to everything where it might be a mobility issue or a vision issue that we need to make sure something is more accessible. So because of that, uh, we have a number of tools. In fact, we probably have, I would say, and I was just on edge saying this, but maybe some of the most diverse tools because we have some of the most diverse products uh, in office to support uh, accessible needs. And I'm going to show you a list of resources today uh, and some groundbreaking technology. And I'll do that live. Technology you can access today, right? Which is really cool. So we're going to have a look at Immersive Reader. I'm sure you've seen Immersive Reader, Word Prediction, Dictate, Editor, Ease of Access. They're the staples within Office to make life a little bit more accessible and easier. Um, and then, of course, uh, really identifying the facts that uh, these are our bread and butter within Office 365. Our CEO, Sachin Nadella, um, has a son, actually, believe it or not, who has accessible needs, who has a disability. So he's a huge advocate for making sure Microsoft uh, have a huge array um, of accessibility built throughout Office. And just to see uh, how much of that learning tools that we're bringing throughout Office our goal is to fill up what we call the learning tools matrix. So if you're using a product like OneNote or Outlook to check your email, maybe Microsoft Word or PowerPoint or Excel, uh, even Microsoft Edge, there are accessibility tools in there to support your learning needs. So it could be a picture dictionary for uh, students that need that visual representation, could be color filters for those that have uh, a visual discrepancy or maybe um, mobility issues, so dictation that really comes into play. So uh, some additional tools which I may not get time to speak to include Microsoft Translator, uh, one of my favorite tools actually to do group translate conversations. I used to use this all the time in many different academic environments. Uh, we have a great little app where it splits the phone into two screens uh, it, when you sit at a table and it translates what you're saying in real time to the uh, the opposite person. 
including group translate, where it can translate into four different languages simultaneously. So if you're bilingual, you speak four languages, uh, it's a great little tool there. Office Lens, which is another great mobile app that will take any hard copy material like this bit of paper and digitize it and use immersive reader, screen readers, dictation, uh, so you can edit those documents. I'll talk about accessibility, uh, automatic alt text using generative AI, and some other aspects of accessibility there as well. So first thing I really want to point out is that all sounds great, Mr. Bowser, but what happens if we need help, right? There's one of you, there's many of us across, across the nation. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but you actually have access uh, to the Disability Answer Desk for free, which is a great place to go if you have access or questions around the hardware that you may need to support your environment. So it could be adaptive touch controllers or it could be eye tracking or halo aspects there. Um, or it could be around the product suite. This will connect you to a real person that is specialized in accessibility that work at Microsoft to answer your questions and solve your needs. So this will be in the PowerPoint deck. Uh, it is the disability answer de uh, deck non-enterprise. So what does that mean? I'm just going to bring it on screen here for you. So what I've just dragged on screen is a website from the Disability Answer Desk at Microsoft. It has everything from accessibility tips. We're going to talk about this one very soon. Answer your questions with AI. Um, and this is great if you need help and you're not part of an organization. Uh, we call that enterprise. So a university or you don't own office, your school, your organization hasn't got office. This is just a generalistic, I need accessible support. So great website for you to contact our accessibility answer desk. We have a phone number. We have ASL support there as well. And we have an email, right? So that you can just click it and send your question. And then obviously they will connect you with the individual that can support you. Now, if you are from an organization, a university, a school, and they have purchased Office, so that means you have access to Word, PowerPoint, Excel, we actually have a Disability Answer Desk Enterprise version. So Enterprise being you are part of an organization or you're part of a, uh, a school that has purchased Office uh, because you're paying for Office more or less, uh, that will redirect you to our Enterprise support for our customers, okay, which is more specific to around obviously using accessibility for work than the general accessibility answer desk. And of course, uh, in the nature of AI, we also have Ask Microsoft Accessibility, which I have a link uh, in there in the PowerPoint as well. And this is a really great website because what this will uh, allow you to do is, if I bring this across, ask artificial intelligence, we have an AI bot, um, and there's some sample questions there that will scan uh, all of Microsoft's resources and provide you with accessibility resources on the fly. So you could ask, how do I use voice access on Windows? Or how do I access dictation in Office? Or how do I find accessible templates to use in my classroom? This is a great little place to go and it will go through using generative AI and find some wonderful, wonderful things to support you there. So some great human-esque, and I say human-esque because yes, it's a phone. You talk to someone on the phone or it's an email, um, but a real person besides the AI, <laughs> but will answer some of your questions and try and help you out. Uh, that way you can scale right across your organization. A lot of people don't know that these support sites are here with real humans on the other end, which is really, really nice. Now, the last thing I want to talk about right before we jump into some AI improvements around accessibility is that we do have an accessibility help and learning page. And a lot of users don't know this one exists either, which is fantastic. You type in uh, where you need help. And this is more of a self-paced static resource. So if you need accessibility support with Windows, Office, Word, Excel, uh, you just ask your question in here and it will provide you with a number of resources. And you can see we actually divide the support uh, into different categories, such as vision, hearing, neurodiversity, learning, mobility, mental health. And you can see all the different tools that we actually have for each topic within Microsoft, everything from adaptive hubs 
and how to support the uh, disability community, how to use a keyboard effectively, how to get support from what I was just mentioning, the Disability Answer Desk. Uh, more resources there than what we have time for today. Now, we'll just pause there just to see if there's any questions. I think that is more or less pretty straightforward. It's a great start knowing that there's this uh, love and support around accessibility, help and learning for everyone uh, that's around. Yes, yeah, Elizabeth, absolutely. A lot of people don't know about the Disability Answer Desk. A lot of people don't know about the accessibility, help and learning. They're great places to start. Okay. Now on that, let's jump into something a little bit different here. In terms of technology, it's only been out for a few months per se. Microsoft 365 Copilot, you may have heard of it. You may have seen some buzz in the news about AI. The great thing that I'm going to show you today is nothing paid in this regard, free access to this tool and how you use this tool for accessibility. Now, to do this, uh, I am going to do a live demo around this, but I want to play this lovely little video that really showcases the power of uh, Copilot and how we're using generative AI in an accessible tense. So I'm just going to hit play here. It's only very short. Hi, I'm Marlon Rogers. I work as Microsoft's Disability Policy Advisor. I'm based in the United States in Washington, D.C. I'm often following hearings, policy announcements, and happenings in legislative bodies around the world. In public policy, words matter a lot. So my notes for these hearings need to be accurate. As a dyslexic note taker, this used to mean listening and re-listening, and then checking transcripts. Now Copilot really is my hearing assistant. I will ask for a summary of the hearing and then follow up seeking direct quotes of the topics I'm following. This saves me time, helps me review more hearings, and creates high quality notes with citations that I can return to whenever I need them. This is my co-pilot. How can yours help you? Sorry, Andrew, you're remained on mute. Ah, <laughs> the, that old one. I have done. <laughs> That's obviously a, uh, a information literacy aspect of accessibility of using Copilot. Someone did ask, uh, is Microsoft Accessibility Copilot questions captioned and logged? The free version of Copilot, there, there is no data protection. So just be very mindful of what you put into that. That doesn't mean it's all over the internet or anything like that. But if you're paying for Copilot in terms of your organization, it's locked to your tenant. There's data protection. You're using the consumer copilot, which I'll be showcasing today. Uh, there is no data protection per se. So just don't get obviously too personal with uh, you know copying medical results or something like that and asking copilot for assistance. That makes sense. So let's actually uh, explore copilot and I'll do some live demos here because I think this is really powerful to see. Uh, I'm a huge advocate for seeing live demos. And Copilot can help in so many different ways, right? I'm going to show how Copilot can recognize anything you take a photo of within your visual environment. And you can obviously understand some huge implications there for those that have low vision or those that need more explanation about their visual environment, but also for information processing. So if you can't concentrate or have autism or you might be uh, dyslexic on how it can help you understand videos, create summaries, how it can help you um, for mobility aspects, write phrases and emails and all sorts of wonderful, wonderful things. Uh, I use Copilot all the time. And I'm going to show you how you can also use Copilot literally today, right? So you can walk away from this and go, oh, wow, I'm going to check that out. So Copilot can be found in five places. Uh, copilot.microsoft.com in the Edge browser. That is the Microsoft Internet browser. So on screen right now, I have a series of different pictures that showcase where Copilot is uh, with obviously Copilot for mobile circled. So that is the one I'll be demonstrating today because I'd encourage you to download Copilot, which is free to your mobile phone. So you can play with it later. Uh, we also are bringing Copilot to Windows for free. And we have bing.com slash chat. So there's five places 
You can access Copilot. You don't have to be limited to your phone, but obviously the phone has some distinct advantages. As you navigate the real world, you have a digital assistant, accessible digital assistant in your pocket that can help you understand, summarize, and visualize your environments. Okay. So I'm going to give you uh, a live demo of that right now. We always love right live demos here. So I'm going to stream my mobile phone to the computer just so you can see what I'm doing here. We're going to get very fancy as I connect my uh, mobile, as you can see here. Uh, and this is my mobile phone. Welcome to my personal mobile uh, device. And I have a little folder here called Microsoft. And this is where I keep Office Lens, which is obviously a very accessible tool to uh, take hard copies of material and digitize them. Microsoft 365, Microsoft Translator. We have a lot of mobile accessibility tools to support users. But you can see here from the Apple Store and the Android Store, you can download Copilot for free, no cost. Okay. Now let's actually have a look at how Copilot can be used for accessibility. Now, uh, I have Copilot right here. And obviously, if you are not attuned to using your mobile phone or you might have a mobility issue, we can actually use our voice with Copilot. So, for example, I have a little camera icon you can see at the bottom of the screen here. You're going to see my desk right here. I know we're getting quite fancy here. If I take a photo of this environment right here, so I've just taken a photo of my peg basket just to give you a visual representation. <laughs> and in Copilot, I'm going to speak to it about what I want it to do. So just follow my lead here for a second. Hi, Copilot, comma. I have low vision and struggle to see the world around me. Full stop. Can you please explain this image that I've provided? Now, I've used my voice, utilized my voice, uh, sent it a random photo. And let's face it, it is quite random. It's a picture of peg. There's a bit of paper. There's a uh, drink bottle sitting on a wooden desk. I've asked Copilot to help me understand what is in that image. Now, I really want you to pause and think about how you can use this because not only can Copilot can pick up distinct things within that image, uh, but it can also do some very, very, very incredible detailed depictions. And I'm going to have Copilot read this out to us because remember, I might have an accessible need here. Just give it a second. For, uh... Certainly. I'd be happy to describe the image you've uploaded. The image depicts a wooden desk with several items arranged on it. Here are the details. Main focus. A gray rectangular basket sits in the center of the desk. The basket has holes on its sides. Inside the basket, there are multiple blue clothespins neatly arranged. Other items on the desk. To the left of the basket, there is some paperwork, possibly documents or notes, and a blue water bottle with a black cap. Behind the basket, there are additional items what appears to be a book or binder, two cylindrical objects, possibly cups or containers. The desk surface is brown and seems to be made of wood. I hope this description helps you visualize the scene. If you have any other questions or need further details, feel free to ask. Absolutely incredible. It Certainly. I'd be happy to describe the- Sorry, I just hit play. It will detail uh, anything in your real environment to uh, an extent unlike anything I've ever seen before. Um, What's great about Copilot as well is that not only can you take obviously pictures of images, but if there's a document that you struggle to understand, like this uh, International Studies Cultural Project, okay? If I'm gonna take a photo of that, I might struggle to understand the written text. I might struggle to read that document. And I need assistance to understand that. Again, I'm gonna ask Copilot. Hi, Copilot, comma. I'm struggling to understand what this document is. Can you please help me process this? Now, the great thing about Copilot, not only can it understand that it's a document, but it can actually read everything on that document and make it a bit more accessible to you. So I could ask it to explain it like I'm a five-year-old child. I could tell it that I may have autism and I need to have short, clear, succinct sentences I could ask it to relate the explanation to real world examples so I can visualize them in my head. It is generative in the sense that it will do 
almost anything you ask it to do. It's bringing accessibility to a whole new level. Uh, and you will notice here, as soon as this generates, uh, it is very, very fun uh, to explore around its possibilities because there's no tool that I know of uh, in the world where you can put it in your pocket and have such uh, authentic digital assistance when it comes to accessibility. So um, I'm going to, again, have this read aloud to me, but then we'll obviously we'll have to move on. Uh, I'll show you some other cool things about Copilot. But you can see here that it's literally breaking up that document in terms of the title, the context, the purpose, literally from a photo. Uh, and if I have that uh, read aloud to us, just for those that may need it, uh, it takes just a second to process, by the way, just so you know. So uh, that's why there's... Certainly. Let's break there. down the document titled International Studies Cultural Project. Title and context. The document is titled International Studies Cultural Project. It appears to be related to an academic project or assignment. It's true. Purpose of the document. The purpose of this project is to explore and understand culture in the context of international studies. Also true. Students are required to research and create a PowerPoint presentation. I'm just going to pause there. Um, but you can see overall message. It's identified that it's a world map and icons. It's going to, I can ask Copilot to summarize this for me. I can ask Copilot to add emojis to help me visualize. I can ask Copilot, uh, how can I change this document to make it more accessible? Like literally, let's do that. Hi, Copilot. How can I make this document more accessible? Can you please give me some ideas? Now, it's going to look at that exact document. And, Certainly. Ooh. Improving document accessibility is essential to ensure that everyone can access and understand the content. Here are some ideas to make your International Studies Cultural Project document more accessible. Okay. Clear formatting and structure. So I'm going to stop you there, Copilot. Um, as you can see, it's not just generalistic talking about how to make things. It's talking about this particular document. So you can imagine the power of Copilot. Now, in the interest of time, I could be here taking photos and explaining how it can identify the colored pegs and all sorts of wonderful things. In terms of productivity, however, right, this is where it really can kick off. So I'm just going to open up, obviously, a uh, website here. And I can ask Copilot to help me understand what is on this website in terms from an accessibility lens, okay? Maybe I'm watching a YouTube video, which I struggle to focus in. I'm st struggling to get, I guess, the main point, the main message. I could copy that video link, okay? Then just open up Copilot again. And I could ask Copilot to summarize this piece of content in five points or less. So I might just do that right now. Copilot, can you summarize this video? Question mark. I have a short attention span and struggle to understand it. Now, what I'm going to do there is just paste the video link just so it understands what I'm referring to. Copilot can summarize it. It can help me articulate it. Um, look at that. Isn't that incredible? So it's summarizing this uh, Microsoft accessibility uh, video that we actually have here. And we'll go through, uh, sorry, I, I copied the, obviously the YouTube ad before I got to the video, but that is such a powerful tool. I could ask it, for example, to uh, break the video down into steps, right? Right. I could ask it, what are the latest updates uh, with accessibility in Copilot? So this will be my last demo on Copilot because there's obviously a lot to show in Microsoft. But uh, I really encourage you to take this away and play with it because there's just so much that you can use for accessibility. And then I'll pause to answer some questions here. Hi, Copilot. What are the latest updates in the accessibility space from Microsoft in the last three months? Now, Copilot. You don't have to search the web. Copilot will understand what we've released in terms of accessibility. Certainly. Here are some of the recent accessibility updates from Microsoft in the last three months. That's incredible, right? Accessibility Assistant in Microsoft 365. Now, I'm going to pause Copilot. In Microsoft 365, a powerful set of tools to help creators produce more accessible content. All right, thank you, Copilot. But as you can see here in the interest of time, it will go through and it will hyperlink, right? 
the resources that it is talking about. And you can see them with the citations. Um, look, honestly, your entire world has just become far more accessible in the, the palm of your hand or in the, the pocket of your pants, so to speak, or dress or whatever you're utilizing to carry around Copilot. I use this on a day-to-day -day basis and it is game-changing, literally game-changing. And as I stated, no cost, right? 100% free there is a paid version that you use for work you put copilot into word excel uh all sorts of wonderful things but there's no limitation to what you could do with copilot uh i'll do one last one this one's for you kylie who organized this lovely webinar uh but you can even use it for work right so you could say hi copilot i'm supposed to be presenting an accessibility presentation tomorrow however i'm feeling sick can you write me an email in the style of Steve Irwin explaining that I won't be able to attend and send my sincere apologies? Right. So as you can see, something a little offbeat. If you have a mobility issue or maybe you struggle. Asterisk, asterisk, subject. To... Crikey. Change of plans for tomorrow's presentation. <laughs> asterisk, asterisk. Good day, mates. Steve Irwin here, coming to you from the land down under. <clears throat> I hope this email finds you all in good spirits. Surrounded oh, by wildlife and adventure. Now, I've got some news that might make you say, blimey. Tomorrow's accessibility presentation, the one where I was supposed to be sharing my passion for all things accessible, will have to go on without me. You see, I'm feeling a bit under the weather, like a sleepy koala in need of a eucalyptus boost. Oh, okay, far you cheeky, cheeky. Anyway, uh, you get the idea, right? So if you struggle with, with literacy, which I did in school, if you struggle in writing emails or maybe it's a mobility uh, issue that you have, this one tool will open up worlds for you. So very powerful, uh, extremely uh Catchy, like the sleepy koala in the need of a boost, of a eucalyptus boost, I should say. Now, questions. I am going to pause there uh, for some questions because obviously, <laughs> um, yes, many great phrases. I'm going to pause there because I'm sure there's some questions around. Yeah. Uh, so there is, yeah, thanks for that. Um, Andrew, there are some, I was about to say Steve. <laughs> Where did I get the word Steve? <laughs> Steve Irwin. <laughs> Now you're confusing me. Um, <clears throat> there's, um, I'll just probably ask the questions around co-pilot. Sure. Um, so there was one in regards to how many times of the free version you can ask co-pilot. Mm -hmm. So in a day. Yeah. So that's a good question. There used to be a day and age where there was limits, right? And you can probably see down the bottom here if I zoom in, one of thirty responses. Okay, that means that you can have thirty back and forth about the same one conversation, all right? So that's the limit in terms of the one topic. So I could go back and say, you know, I don't like that email, change it to this. So I could go back about my uh, document and say, hey, look, how can I expand on this point or how can I make this accessible for low vision? Copilot will help me. Can you please link me to some Microsoft resource that will help me achieve that? Uh, so you can go back and forth 30 times in the one conversation. This is the beauty of it. This little button down the bottom left-hand corner, this is called new conversation. You hit that, boom, you have 30 more back and forth conversations. You get uh, more with signing into Copilot, as you can see I've done at the top there. You can use your uh, work account if it's enabled within your tenants. And most tenants, it is enabled, the free version, uh, which means that anything you put in Copilot is protected, okay? However, you can also sign in with a consumer account. So that's at Hotmail or at Outlook or whatever it may be. Uh, and you can still use it, you know, throughout uh, X, Y, and Z processes just without the protection. I don't know on the recent limitation. I don't think there is one, to be honest, like, hey, you've, you've used all of your conversations today. So um, yeah, if, if, if that is the case, I'll update in post, but I'm, I'm pretty sure we've expanded that now. Excellent. Just another question was around what voice that was. Um, so that is that an Android phone that you're using? Or? I'm using an iPhone and <laughs> okay. uh, the voice dictation and the voice prompts come from the actual phone device itself. So okay. Android will have X, Y, and Z and, and iPhone will have X, Y, and Z. Um, yeah, yep. uh, dictations okay. that's coming from the phone itself. And now, then... if you like a different voice, you can actually use it in a web browser, obviously, and that will take your computer's voice I know a lot of users 
uh, install, you know, Australian English. As you can see, this is Copilot on the right-hand side. Uh, the exact same thing, but not on my mobile phone. And I can do everything I just did um, right there on a computer. Excellent. So in relations to like, so for a computer that um, for someone using a screen reader on a computer who's mm -hmm. blind, what is the interaction between Copilot and a screen reader? Yeah, that's a great, great topic because I was just reading about that right before we started uh, this session. We actually have, if I just go to a website and bring you up a reference, if you type in Copilot and screen readers, we actually have a website here that's all about using Copilot in Word with a screen reader, for example. Uh, we have support documents about using Copilot, screen readers, uh, the different types of technologies that we actually have here, which is really interesting um, because it might, might be a screen reader, it might be dictation, it might be some third party that you have uh, on there. Uh, we've incorporated accessibility components into the support site around Copilot. So just, just ask what you'd like Copilot to do with Screen Reader or whatever it may be, and there'll be a support site to support you. Excellent. Yeah. Um, I think that is all the Copilot questions. Now we've got a few that'll come up later. So if you want to keep sure. going and we'll keep going. Sorry no, about this, Denny, but yeah, no worries. we will come back to questions. Yeah, absolute game changer. Um, I'm really excited to share that with you today. <laughs> the fact that it can really identify anything in your real world and, and save you so much time and a lot of accessibility built into Copilot. Uh, okay, so let's jump into some other aspects of accessibility and uh, Office 365. Uh, so I'm just going to bring this up. Uh, this is our PowerPoint deck before I went and uh, blown your mind with this amazing pocket accessibility aspect here. Uh, and we're going to have a look at some other aspects that's obviously more baked in, less generative, that's outside of Copilot. Okay, and I've just added some screenshots of how Copilot works in the PowerPoint deck for that, those that might need this description. So you can go through this in your own time and explore. Now, I would like to talk about Windows accessibility. Obviously, we had a look at Copilot, which is on your phone or can be in the browser or built onto your PC. We actually have a lot of accessibility tools built into Windows and Windows 11. Now, I have a small video, which I'd love to show because Christine Douglas, uh, she's win from Wyndham College. She's in year 11. Uh, and we've employed Christine in a traineeship at Microsoft to support us with making accessibility resources from a student perspective, but also to assist uh, adult educators. Uh, you can see here, Christine working on accessible posters, accessibility posters, I should say, um, making uh, Windows 11 and 10 top tip videos on how you can make this more accessible. Um, and Christine's asked, well, I've more or less asked if I'm able to share, obviously a piece of Christine's video. So you can see, how she builds accessible content using these technologies, okay? Um, the first thing you'll notice when I play just a portion of this video for you today, I might just play the first minute or so, is that she uses an AI voice to text, right? Speech to describe the video for those that need that accessibility support. And she's in year 11, right? So she can do it. We all definitely can do it. Uh, so this is her short video called the way you see it. Uh, this one actually at a short film uh, festival. And uh, I said, hey, can I, uh, am I able to share this uh, today? Uh, just to show how you built an accessible video with uh, some of the AI capabilities that we have here in Microsoft. And I'll share how she actually put the uh, voice to text over the video just by typing it in. Black and white footage of Christine's hand brushing against long grass fades in, followed by footage of the back of her head. Now that is an AI voice that Christine's just typed in. Hello everyone, my name is Christine Douglas. I'm 19 years old and a pathway student at Wyndham College in New South Wales. But what sets me apart from other students is that I'm legally blind. However, that doesn't stop me from achieving my goals. Recently I was elected in a school captain and recently won judge's choice for my short documentary called The Way You See It. Black and white footage fades to colour as Christine looks at the camera. 
Christine walking in a field with a cane with text on the screen that reads, The Way You See It, a short film by Christine Douglas. POV of Christine using her cane in the playground, inside buildings and going up and down stairs. Now I'm just gonna... Another thing that sets me apart is that I am the first blind school-based trainee and so I work at Microsoft as a part of my work experience. But before I talk any more about that, let me start from the very beginning. Chris now I'm just going to pause there. Uh, obviously you notice there's closed captions here on the Zoom call. So we're catering for that aspect. I don't have them on here, but Christine has provided an audio description of her video and she's utilized the Windows tools to do such, okay? Um, we have an AI voice video editor in our new video editing suite called Microsoft Flipchamp. So that's Clipchamp. Dot com. Uh, it is an AI video editor. It has accessible tools in there. I can't show you that one right now. Um, I can provide you the website. But maybe I can get the, the lovely moderators to put it in clickchamp.com because it's not out for education markets yet, which basically means you have to sign in with a consumer account as it stands. Um, but there are other ways to achieve what Christine uh, has achieved using Windows 10 and 11 and using your voice and putting that into the video. So Christine actually made a video on that. It's a 15 minute video, which I'm not showing today, but I'm putting a link into the PowerPoint slide where Christine will talk about all of the accessibility features that Windows has from her perspective and how it benefits her as someone that is legally blind. And I thought that was a really great video to make uh, solely to hear from someone that utilizes this from a student perspective. Uh, so you have access to that if you'd like to watch that after the fact. And I've also included a video um, from John, who's a designer at Microsoft, uh, who works on the input and accessibility features in Windows 10 and 11. So he's basically talks about he's natively baked these into Windows for those that need that. So again, I will leave that in the presentation uh, for you to consume after. Yes, I love examples from students too. I think they're very powerful. So uh, just to talk about Windows 10 11, I'll keep this quite brief because then we'll move on to Office. But it's very important you understand that Windows is designed with accessibility in mind. And we did uh, basically speak about this uh, last time I was here, but it's, it's one that you should never forget because, again, it is the staple uh, of making sure a device is accessible for users. So if you are using Windows 10, it is called the Ease of Access Center on Windows 10. And you can see the Ease of Access toolbar in the settings uh, aspect of Windows. So if you just type in Ease of Access in the Windows search, it will take you to the Ease of Access Center. Uh, Windows 11 builds on top of that if you're using Windows 11. Ah, thank you. Thank you, Darlene. And it adds, obviously, uh, more accessible improvements in there. Uh, improved voice typing, for example, improved narration using a bit of AI, improved live captions. So they have the same features. You're not left out if you're using 10 or 11. It's just 11 is obviously a bit more updated being a new Windows um, subsystem. So everything from vision to hearing to neurodiversity, things like enable text suggestions, turn off animations, Obviously, they can trigger seizure-like events, snap order, simplify the screen, dark contrast, different types of color capabilities that we actually have there. We reimagined this in Windows 11. We now call it the Accessibility Center, um, formerly known as Ease of Access. Uh, and this is where you go and personalize right everything you need in Windows. So I'll quickly just spend a few minutes uh, talking about that. So it is in uh, the settings aspect of both windows okay so it doesn't matter if you're on 10 or 11 uh even seven uh you just go into your settings and on the left hand side if you're using windows 11 or 10 you'll see either ease of access which you saw on the screenshot or accessibility okay so what i'm demonstrating right now on screen is the windows uh, 11 accessibility dashboard and here we break them up into vision um, uh, hearing, interaction, and this is where you can tailor your device so you can change the text size, for example. 
you can change the mouse cursor, turn off the visual effects for neurodiversity. Uh, when I'm doing big presentations at the front of a room, I'll pick a really bold color for those that might struggle at the back there and use a lot of these accessibility features. Christine Douglas, who I was just demonstrating, uses Magnifier and you've seen me use Magnifier today. That's where I use these shortcuts in Windows, which is the Windows Plus icon to quickly zoom in on things that I'm talking about. So I'm talking about how you can invert the colors. Uh, I am using accessibility features. You saw Christine using some of the voice accessibility features to make uh, her videos more dynamic and more accessible by doing dictation, by doing narration. Uh, and if you're someone like I was using with Copilot that needs uh, speech to text and text to speech, we have all that built in to Windows 10 and 11 uh, color filters. There is a lot to unpack here. So I'm going to pause there just in case you have any questions around uh, the Windows 10 or 11 Accessibility Center. Uh, I must say the new narration is absolutely fantastic. Narrate a dialogue, skip for now, right. button, Alt and S. I have what new we call- natural voices are available. Narrator now offers more natural sounding voices that you- I call that set the- Narrator, win the narrator window. Sully. Welcome to Narrator, heading this level one. This is the one. new narration home. This is Narrator home, where you can get help exiting gonna... Narrator exit that because I'm competing with narration. But as you can see, we've redesigned how narration works um, and we have Australian English, right? So uh, even though I call it the Sandra Siley, because that's what it sounds like, I grew up watching that, that type of news, uh, there are Australian voices and natural language packs in which you can download, which is all enhanced by AI to sound more natural. Now, I haven't installed them because I love to show uh, just what it looks like out of the box. They are free to add those natural voices. As you can see here, it says add natural voices. Click add, and you can actually add some lovely natural voices uh, in there. We also kept the legacy voices in case you like that. You know, some people don't like to know things are too real that aren't real, if that makes sense. You know, when it says um and are, you get a little bit confused. So we do have those um those legacy voices in there. Now, this has everything from obviously mobility, neurodiversity, hearing, interaction um, that can be coupled with hardware too. So uh, halos, eye tracking, all those extra peripherals that you can actually put in here. Now, I'll pause and just make sure there's no... So someone asked, is ClipChamp consumer-free? Yes, it is. Uh, will be a Mac version in future of ClipChamp. ClipChamp's a web-based video editor. So it doesn't matter what device you're using, which is a win-win for everybody. Um, I think I, the question in regards to a Mac version, I think oh, it could have also be with Copilot. Is that across also? Yes. Like across, so it's yep. a website. Yep. 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 So to cater for right. different devices, copilot.microsoft.com, or you just install Edge, which is the browser, the internet browser, which I'll just bring up on screen for those that need a, a visual representation there which is an internet browser, which I'm going to talk about right now as we go into Office. So, Excellent. so just one of the other questions was regarding um, the Microsoft um, tools um, around design aspects. Are mm -hmm. there plans to include tools that assess the suitability of user designs and style choices for colorblind individuals? I don't know if that ease of access, those resources will address that or is there more coming? Great question. We actually have on our Microsoft uh, support website for accessibility. If I bring this up uh, under accessibility, you can see I've got a lot of lot of accessibility links here. But we actually have templates that have been pre-designed for accessibility in mind, which is really great. You can find them on the accessibility help and learning. If you just look for uh, accessibility templates, right, it will take you to, sorry, I just hit that twice, it will take you to accessible templates that have been pre-designed with the correct font, correct color schemes um, that have been verified, but those that need, I think it's the uh, the web content accessibility and guidelines, the WCAG, if I'm saying that correctly, uh, that you can download and use. But we also are bringing some AI, right, in the designer features, which, you know, are rolling out more or less uh, very, very soon. 
uh, in terms of making that content more accessible, which is always a hard one because it's such a creative aspect. Um, but I've seen some of the stuff we're doing there and just like Copilot <laughs> blows my mind. <laughs> yep. So, uh, yes. Now, we're going to get to Edge right now and Office because I need to talk about Accessibility Checker and some of the accessibility tools that are in Office away from Windows. So you saw some great tools in Windows 10, Windows 11. Uh, they're all baked in to the operating system itself, closed captions, narration, voice typing. Um, but you will notice using Microsoft Edge, which is this browser, and this will be my segue into Office, this is the most accessible browser I've ever seen uh, in the sense that if you look at uh, these websites right here, so I'm on Innovative Tools for Accessible Learning, which is a Microsoft website, you'll notice at the top, I'm just going to circle these. And what I'm doing on screen right now is circling a button which will activate screen reading ability in a browser. And then the second circle I am circling will activate immersive reader for those that need it within uh, the majority of websites, okay? So for example, if I would like this page read aloud to me, I can hit this lovely little read aloud page or control shift U. Accessibility tools for inclusive learning. Foster a learning environment where all students and teachers feel included and have the tools and resources they need to succeed. That voice is getting very natural. I must say the voices, uh, there's 136 different types of dialects and voices. So if you speak uh, New Zealand, for example, uh, you can actually change that to have a, an, an English Indian tinge or English New Zealand tinge to it, English Island. Let's change it to New Zealand, for example, and hit play. Succeed. Innovative tools for accessible learning. Immersive reader. Help all students improve reading comprehension, stay engaged, and build confidence while supporting students with learning differences and new language learners. Right, and we can go and change that to maybe a British tinge or an Indian tinge. So there's different types of dialect of the same language. Uh, but in addition to voice uh, or voice to speech, text to speech, we also have next to read aloud, immersive reader, which I'm sure you are all in love with and know how immersive reader works. It takes away the distractions of a page uh, and allows you to customize that page to become more accessible. So everything from page themes to the spacing of text, all the ads and clutter disappears, change the column style. We actually have students that say the headaches go away when they select, say, Lilac or those students that might need or you might be a staff member that has a particular uh, overlay of glasses or use the sheet over a particular bit of paper that you need to photocopy. We also have reading preferences where you can turn on line focus, two focus, uh, one, three, or five lines at a page. And we can actually translate the entire page into many languages of choice. So I've just translated this page into uh, Dutch, for example. Tilgængelighedsværktøjer til inkluderende læring. Uddannelse. Produkter. Right, uh, which is really, really powerful. So we have lots and lots, lots of accessibility needs within Immersive Reader. Probably one of my favorite tools uh, that I use on a day-to-day -day basis just to consume information, okay? And this works on the majority of websites uh, and it is identifiable with the Immersive Reader in the URL. Now, Immersive Reader also works across Office 365. So you don't actually have to be uh, on a website per se. You could be in a Word document. And the first thing you'll notice with my Word document is that I have dark mode on. That is an accessibility feature that we've built into the uh, web version of Word and the desktop versions of Word. I just find I don't like that 10 at 6 a.m. in the morning <laughs> when I start to work, that white negative space. But you'll notice that we do have immersive reader built into Office. So you'll find it in Word, Whiteboard, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, Teams, uh, OneNote. The majority of Office 365 um, uh, tools, we actually have Immersive Reader built in. 
uh, and some other great features such as reading view, which you can change the reading view of a document, for example, or you can enable immersive reader and combine different color schemes uh, while you're working within that, that said document. So I've just turned on uh, a very clean reading view, as you can see here. And the first thing you'll notice is accessibility mode. Okay. Now, what is accessibility mode? It may pique your interest. If I click on accessibility mode, all right, that's going to take me, and just wait for that one to load up right there, take me to a very particular area within Word where it uh, gets rid of all the distractions, as you can see here, and all of my tools are designed around accessibility, okay? So everything from zooming in, zooming out, read aloud, drawing tools, um, print mode, uh, I can even turn on immersive reader in here. It's just all of the distractions are gone. It's contrast the document with the white to negative space. Uh, and then I can basically just change this back to edit mode from accessibility mode. Now we do have accessibility checker, just like immersive reader built across Office as well. So you'll see this uh, not only accessibility section, but also check accessibility. And that will look at this particular Word document and bring up any accessibility issues found, um, whether it's, it's you know, images that you have that you don't have alt text, whether it's uh, the structure of shapes that you actually have. I'm going to bring up a PowerPoint in just a moment uh, and show you how it will pull me up on a number of things because I added a bunch of slides right at the last moment for Kylie, right before um, I submitted it. So I haven't made them quite accessible, which I promise I will by the time you get them. But it'll be a great demo to show you the things I need to do when bringing up accessibility checker, including alternative text, okay, generative text alternative text. So I'm going to show you how uh, the AI can create alt text descriptions. But while we're here, uh, I'm going to show you some very cool things. I'm just going to zoom in for you. Very cool things around dictation, right? You've seen and heard a lot of dictation and voice narration today. Um, I think you'll find that you'll use it a lot more once you see how well dictation works. So I'm going to give you a live demo. I love my live demos. I think seeing is believing uh, with dictation. And we recently bought a dictation company, uh, I think it was last year. Uh, and dictation is, is quite incredible in terms of accessibility now, and especially those that have mobility issues. I'm sorry, closed captioner. I, I am attempting to slow down a little bit in my sentences for you. <laughs> so let's turn on dictation. Now I'm just going to stop dictation there and make sure my spoken language is English Australia. We've done a lot of work with the US team to make sure things are localized here in Australia. I am going to set my microphone, as you can see here, testing, testing. Um, and I'll leave off sensitive phrases. That's a profanity filter. I'm not going to say any profanities today. And I'll also turn off auto punctuation so you can hear me actually edit my document as I go through this live today. Okay. Now I'm showing you this because I use this on my phone, as you could see with Copilot. I use this when writing emails and writing documents. Dictation is built into Office. And if you haven't utilized it recently, highly recommend you give it another go. Um, I'm on the web version. Okay, so it doesn't matter what device you're using. doesn't matter what OS you're using. This is just using the website Word version of Word. You can see here, it's got all of the things I can do with my voice on the right-hand side the moment you turn on dictation. So I can have a look at all the different punctuation phrases I can say or the editing phrases I can say. But I'll give you a live demo here. Okay, so let's uh, turn on dictation. Hello, everybody, comma. My name is Andrew, and this is an example on how we have improved dictation, full stop. Now, I am generally a fast speaker. So I find that dictation keeps up with everything I'm saying really, really well, full stop. New paragraph. Now, you will notice dictation takes a second to process in the cloud because it's powered by artificial intelligence. Full stop. Delete the last sentence. As you 
saw just then I'm making this up on the spot and I made a mistake. So I deleted the last sentence with my voice. Full stop. Bold. Now I've literally started to change the formatting and the font of my document by using my voice. Full stop. Start list. And you get the idea, right? That done that, uh, that, that actually performed that really well. You can see it made one mistake right there. And that was more or less my fault because I was speaking <laughs> and stumbling because I was making it up as I went through. But there's a lot of great things that you can actually do here using dictation uh, throughout Word, PowerPoint, Excel. And it does it really, really well. Everything from changing italics and bold and new paragraphs. Um, I use that quite a lot. Um, Yes, I am using the Aptos font. Uh, this is preferred for ease of reading. Yes, correct. That is my um, default font of choice, literally, for accessibility. So, yeah, some great, great improvements that we actually have there. Dictation, just like Immersive Reader, is built throughout Office. Okay. Now, I will jump over to PowerPoint, right, from Word. We'll jump over to PowerPoint here. As you can see this is literally the presentation uh, that I am sharing with you today in desktop version of PowerPoint now. I've jumped from the web to the desktop solely because I want to show you the accessibility checker, accessibility options, um, display the alt text plane that we have here. Uh, and as you can see, this is a big PowerPoint. There's 57 slides in here. And as I bring up uh, my accessibility checker, I'm going to click check accessibility. So what I'm demonstrating right now on screen is a PowerPoint presentation with some of the accessibility options, such as inspect without color, spelling and grammar, font color, and of course, the review check accessibility uh, aspect of my document. So on the right hand side, you can see I have uh, a number of errors. So I have a uh, missing object description for those that might, may have a screen reader or may have a visual accessible need, missing some slide titles, uh, some audio or video subtitles, and some reading or that's pretty good for a 57 uh, PowerPoint slide. Trust me, believe me, uh, this can be quite an extensive list, but I did clean this up prior to sending and I've added a bunch of things since then. So I could click on the image, for example, that it is identifying that I may be missing something from. And you'll notice we have an alternative text button. Now this is allowing you to enter your own description, okay? So I can click Alt Text. And you can see here the generative alternative text has actually uh, described that for me, a person sitting in front of the computer. Now I can add more details, obviously, but we are powering alternative text with generative AI moving forward, just so you know. Not quite out yet, but I'm making the call right now here. So you can actually click this generate an alternative text for me. Um, and it will actually put down here, you know, just in case it's wrong for the time being, description automatically generate a person in a headset talking on the phone, right? Which might not be completely accurate from what it's saying. So I'd go through and not approve the alternative text, or maybe it's a, a decorative piece like this. I would mark that as decorative and that would solve that accessibility issue. Okay. So, uh, I understand some people have to head off. Don't worry, the recording is here. I'll pause there just in case you have any questions around dictation, around accessibility checker in Word, around immersive reader that we actually have. It could be, is this available on mobile? How many yeah. languages? So with the immersive reader, there was um, some people were struggling to find it in the Microsoft Edge toolbar. Is that more if your Microsoft Edge is with your organization as it turned off or is it not available or in all? So Yeah, so good question. Now I'll point this out. Immersive reader right here, right, is a little symbol with a book and a uh, speaker. It works for the majority of websites. But if I click on a website, that doesn't support immersive reader just due to the um, design of the website. It might have like a lot of embedded things. You'll notice this one supports Zoom, voice to speech, and immersive reader. 
Okay, they're the little symbols that are popping up. But if I go to a website that doesn't support immersive reading, I'm just flicking through some of these. Okay, this one here does not support immersive reader. Hence, the symbol has disappeared. I'm guessing that could be the issue. Uh, however, if you highlight the text on screen, this is a nice workaround. Uh, you can see here, highlight, right click in edge, you have open section in immersive reader. Excellent. So it's our Excellent. way to get around people That's that make great. tricky and words. Also, um, some um, people in the chat have added that function F9 also brings it up to oh, yeah. some, so that's great. Teaching Boys, me. Yes, that's great. Um, <laughs> another question was around the dictation tool working in other um, apps like Excel, PowerPoint, or is it only in Word at the moment? No, no, it's, it's just like Immersive Reader and Accessibility Checker. It's across Office 365, yes. Um, and in saying that, if you're not using Office, right? Windows has it built in as well. So if you're using a third-party application, uh, you know, Google Docs or whatever it may be, uh, you can actually turn it on via that accessibility center or ease of access center uh, in Windows. Brilliant. Um, somebody else said that they often view um, work documents um, as Adobe PDF files. Mm -hmm. If I use the Adobe Reader extension on Edge, can I use Microsoft Immersive Reader on these PDFs? Yes, I believe so. We actually have, I love these these questions here. We actually have a brand new PDF reader built into Edge, right? Which is fantastic. Um, I'll just check to see if it's rolled out because if it's not, you don't know this, it might be rolling out. <laughs> so if I click on the new PDF reader in Edge, uh, you can see here, open PDF reader in Edge, mark up, highlight, take notes. I believe we are bringing Immersive Reader. We've got Read Aloud, as you can see right there. You should very soon see the little Immersive Reader button in your PDF documents if they're loaded in Edge. So that's just the requirement. You open them up in Edge, not via Adobe, if that makes yep. sense. Yep, oh, excellent. This great. is great. Um, yeah. Another question was around that accessibility, and I think because you've done the accessibility checker. Mm -hmm. um, so. Yeah, so the flags that come up, I wonder if later versions might be able to flag text size that doesn't meet accessibility recommendations or where a slide might have a text box instead of a text placeholder or may not yeah. appear in the slide line. That's a great think. question. The yeah. answer is yes. We actually had a conversation internally about uh, how co the technology behind Copilot, as you saw, is light years ahead um, because it is generative, right, AI, so it can actually understand the environment, understand the pictures. The limitation that we have at the moment with Accessibility Checker is it, it's not AI driven yet. And when I say yet, I can confirm it will be. Um, as you saw, and let's be honest, it identified this individual of speaking on the phone, sitting in a chair. And I can understand why the generative aspect, which isn't powered by Copilot, would get that from this, even though not exactly accurate. Uh, our new iteration that would be powered by obviously GPT uh, will do a much, much better job, just like how I took a photo of the basket of pegs and it could pick individual colours up to the T. So, yes. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. That's great. Yes. Um, Amber just asked, where can we find a list of formatting commands for dictation, bold, start list, heading? I know you showed something on the side Bar, but maybe it mm -hmm. was very fast. And for those kind of sure. um, screen reader users, it may be difficult to understand. I will. When you start dictation, you'll see a little question mark right here. Um, but but there is a website, which I'm happy to uh, obviously uh, send a link after the fact, which will take you to a list of all the commands. Like if I click read article in browser, all the commands that you can actually do plus a video, and I'll put that into the chat right now for you um, about using dictation in Word for the web. And remember, it does work in other Office applications here. So you can see this will have every command that you can do um, for dictation. So you can practice. This is how I, someone asked me the other day, how do you know to say new list and bold and new paragraph and delete the last word from that sentence? This. <laughs> practice makes perfect.
Yeah, right. Brilliant. Perfection. <laughs> yep. And just one other question. So we're doing really well with the questions at the moment. Um, cool. does the um dictate train itself as as it's going or yes. is it update? Yep. Yeah. So uh that's part of the the ELU agreements that you have within Office uh, that it will use obviously the voice input from dictation to make dictation better. It's part of the licenses that go with uh, dictation if the tenant has obviously agreed to turn that on. But I have noticed leaps and bounds from last year to this year and then from this year to I think the majority of time that I've spent today doing dictation, it's made one single mistake, which is fantastic. No, it's certainly changing and getting better and better all mm. the time. So we've got 20 minutes to go, um, Andrew. So we've actually wiped all the questions. So, right. um, yeah, so, but I'll keep an eye on the, the chat and let you know if there's, um, you know, if there's more questions coming in. But at the moment, yep, 20 minutes to go. Thank you. Great. Fantastic. Okay. Well, with your 20 minutes, I'm going to try and give you more value for time and we'll pause at the last 10 minutes to share some resources with you that I've provided in the PowerPoint deck so you can go away and explore all of this in your own time, okay? Uh, so Edge and extensions, Immersive Reader is an extension. Edge is designed to be immersive out of the box. So Read Aloud, Zoom, Immersive Reader, they don't exist in any other browser because they have to be some kind of third-party add-on, even Google Chrome. It's all built into Edge, accessibility in mind, and it gets better and better. Um, we even have numeracy accessibility in there. So, yeah, that's a good little tip right there. Now, uh, while I'm here, uh, I'd love to show some more accessibility features that are specific to certain tools. So, for example, a lot of users use PowerPoint. You can do dictation in PowerPoint. And I'm just, you know, so I can show you exactly I mean what I mean. Um, and you don't even have to speak English, believe it or not. You can dictate in Chinese or you can dictate in French if you speak it. You might be bilingual. Uh, I'll change mine to English Australian. Um, but you also obviously can go to view and you can turn on immersive reader. So dictation, immersive reader. But what I love about PowerPoint has some very specific uh, tools. So for example, uh, if you're doing a presentation at the front of the room, you might know a cultural audience that is attending your session or they might need a visual aid. So I can change my spoken language and my subtitle language. So let's just say, for example, we have uh, some Dutch uh, lovely students coming on in or some parents coming in. I'm obviously here speaking English at the front of the room. I've clicked always use subtitles and I click play from current slide Right. I'm just using the web version, by the way, of PowerPoint right now. You will notice as I continue to speak, the subtitles in Dutch will start appearing uh, down the bottom of the PowerPoint. And there's many, many, many languages, uh, I believe over 100 of uh, different types of subtitles that you can have to provide more accessible cultural uh, linguistics with your presentation, right? So this is my presentation, real presentation, by the way, that you are seeing on screen around the solar system that I would use in my high school classes for those that need a visual description. And down the bottom of this, uh, subtitles of my language that I'm speaking in English are coming through in Dutch or Chinese or Indonesian or whatever you Mercury. want. Oh, there's a video of me talking about Mercury. <laughs> uh, another great accessibility feature yeah, it's great. It does it really. Do you speak Dutch? Does it? It does it really, really well. Um, another great feature I'd love to show, and if you have a mobile phone, I really encourage you to grab it right now because I'm going to explain how this is an accessibility feature. Um, I will put a link into the chat if you don't have access to a mobile phone uh, right now. But I, I love showing you this uh, feature right here. It's called Present Live. Okay, it's different from just, you know, doing a PowerPoint presentation. It's a very special accessibility tool within PowerPoint. And uh, I'm just going to change my audio settings, subtitle language, English, great, microphones on, all that lovely stuff. Now, if I press present live, right, what that will do is bring up a QR code for you to scan or a link for me to share into the chat. And I want you to... Uh, visualize what this need is for. 
I was doing a parent teacher interview uh, at school in 2018. And the student had Italian grandparents, elderly, low vision, hard of hearing. English was not their native language. Uh, so I enabled PowerPoint Live. This beams the presentation to any device in the room just by using a QR code. And I'll just copy this right here and put it into the chat for those that don't have cell service or uh, access to a mobile. Feel free to click that. Not only does it beam the presentation to everybody's device, iPads, Macs, browsers, mobiles, but it also translates the presentation to the specific device. Extremely hot. As you can see here, oh, this my, is a very accurate reference. There's my... Um, Mercury. Video play. Scorched Earth, um, as we know it, because it's and so you'll close. notice there's a so button for you. Orbital pattern of eighty-seven point seven. Sorry, I just got to wait for myself to stop speaking in the PowerPoint. Okay. Now uh, I'm just going to pause it out because hi, hi, Red. This is a demo. All right, right? I'm just going to um, click. So yeah, skip. <laughs> That's enough, Mr. Bowser. Um, and what you'll notice is that sorry, I took your QR code away, so there is a link in there is that it is beaming the presentation to your device. And you'll notice a little English section down there. I'll open this up in a browser for those that might want to see what it looks like from an attendee perspective. But it's providing a transcript in their native language of the presentation. And by changing the transcript language, maybe that person wants it in French, okay? Um, that presentation is beamed to their device for low vision. It is translated, um, obviously, for, for cultural differences that we actually have there. You can see the presentation beaming in. And they can go back and pinch and zoom and look at the graph and the details. Maybe they're sitting at the back of the hall. So to my point, um, the Italian grandparents absolutely loved it. They had their device. They could sit right at the back of the room. They could see all the details. We just handed them an iPad. They could read it in Italian, listen to me in English. Um, yeah, absolutely fantastic. Uh, now, you don't have to turn on, the obviously, the transcript on the right-hand slide, but it divides it up into slides. It divides it up into a transcript. Um, and you'll notice these reactions down the bottom appear when I'm presenting uh, on my PowerPoint um, because it emails me a summary of uh of everyone's reactions and what slides you liked and slides less around this accessibility aspect obviously but um more around the feedback side so i really did want to show that because there's just so many use cases from a visual and a uh, auditory aspect uh that you can take this using powerpoint live again free everyone has it it's one of those hidden secrets you know just unless you know uh, what it is uh, it's very very easy to miss right so yeah I lost uh, I lost where I put my PowerPoint presentation so I uh, I'm trying to end it but uh, I don't know where, <laughs> where I put it so we'll just uh, move on feel free to not watch the PowerPoint presentation because I've, Mr. Bowser's got it open in one of his many many windows uh, here oh here it is don't worry I've found it so, yes, yeah, so I can turn off the captions. Uh, I can end the presentation for you all. Um, I can turn on the camera and beam a camera to their device if they're sitting in a big hall or a big room. Uh, so I'm just going to click end. So not only do you have many subtitle opportunities, but you also have uh, present live, which will beam your voice, translate your voice, provide a copy to the attendees so they can pinch and zoom, go back, read the the more important aspects that you may have you know, skipped over. Yeah, it is amazing. It's uh, been there for a while, but you don't know what you don't know. Sorry, guys, we are running out of time. I do apologize. Um, but there are just a few things I'm going to do lip service on in the last two minutes, and then we'll spend the last 10 minutes talking about resources. That's very important um, through there. So I've concentrated, obviously, on the showstopper of Copilot, which you have access to for free, uh, Immersive Reader, Word, PowerPoint, Accessibility Checker, subtitles, present live. There is so much more uh, that we have throughout Office 365. And I'll demonstrate uh, this clip jam, by the way, which again, you don't know this, you don't have access to it yet, but watch that space <laughs> um, that you will have access to an office to make things more accessible, especially the disability support desk, where you can get real live support from real people uh, is a great benefit. 
But I also want to uh, shout out to Microsoft Translator, which is a, a great tool as well. So I'm just going to bring this up uh, over here. Now, Copilot obviously will translate everything for you. Um, but Microsoft Translator is a great app, which is 100% free. Um, you download it. I'm just going to bring this across for you. So anyone watching right now, I'm bringing a website that has Microsoft Translator uh, on it. And basically what it allows you to do is enter a conversation code, enter a username, select your language and select the speech recognition region. And that basically allows live translation to say if you had 30 different people speaking 30 different languages. Uh, you can see here we have plenty of language, like I mean a lot of languages, uh, all participating in the same space. Yeah, absolutely. So in the last, uh, I guess, demo that we'll do here, I am going to encourage you to go to translator.microsoft.com in the chat. Okay. I'm going to create a new conversation and provide a join code in the chat for those that would like to join. And that join code is X-G-A-E-L. Okay. So you just enter your five letter conversation code in there, which I will do right now. And enter your username. I'll be Mr. B. My language is, let's not go for English. Let's go Filipino, Republic of Philippines. Click join. And I have it open on my, um, oh, sorry. Did I enter my room code wrong? I did. I have it open on my mobile phone. So what you will see, the language that you've chosen, right, <clears throat> will actually appear here as I speak. So we normally will hang this around our neck with a linear, just your mobile phone. And anyone can join the conversation and have it translated to their language of choice, right? The great thing about translator is you can see the little microphone button down there. You could speak your native language and it will translate that to everyone else, to their language of choice. It's just one of those great, free, accessible tools that you have access to that really does make an amazing experience to break down cultural barriers, um, provide more language options and communication options. And uh, you, you may be asking, can it speak it out? Yes. Can you change the, the Zoom and the, the color schemes? Yes. Can you save a transcript of this conversation? Yes. And you're probably noticing how accurate does it translate this um, there as well. Ah, sorry, conversation I'll be found. I see a few people have joined at the top here. Right. So you get the eye. Oh, there we go. We've got Sam who is speaking. Uh, I've set my language to be Filipino, so I don't know what that says. But if I <laughs> add that in English, I'm sure I could understand what Sam is saying. So, yeah, great group translation tool uh, for languages. It can actually translate simultaneously. Right. Uh, which is really cool. So I can see the participants in here, those that have joined, um, and some really cool. Extra options are in the mobile phone um, on how that works. You can also type as well. So Sam is saying hello. Okay, great. <laughs> okay, i got to stop it there, guys. I'll be here all day showing you all the tools that we actually have uh, throughout Office 365, and I'm sure you have some, some questions. So uh, let's just jump back to our, our PowerPoint, and I'm just going to bring it to our resources. It's been a lot of fun uh, being here with you today. And hopefully you've, you've picked up some really great tools here. So you will get a copy of this PowerPoint. What I'm demonstrating right now on screen is uh, six videos. Sorry, I had to count just then um, on accessibility stories that we actually have, just like Christine in Microsoft. I really love these videos. Uh, Andrew, for example, I really relate to. My name's Andrew. Uh, I struggled to read as well when I was young, uses learning tools. He uses Immersive Reader, all right? Uh, Justin uses dictation to write documents in, in Word. Veronica is low vision, just like Christine, uh, who's created the perfect website using Microsoft Sway, which is another product you have access to for free. Um, university lecturer who believes in exciting time to be a blind person with seeing AI, all right? 
Um, so there's a lot of great videos there, personal case studies and stories that we actually have. Is Copart only available from Edge? Uh, no, you can go to copart.microsoft.com, but you can install it on your phone or you can um, bring it to the side of Edge using the button, which is only available in Edge, the Copilot button. I believe this plugin's coming too for other <laughs> browsers. We have an accessibility learning webinar series, okay? So if you are interested in learning more about accessibility and you want to attend live workshops, uh, you can sign up for accessibility uh, webinar sessions. And you can also check out the completed accessibility webinar sessions that we actually have here. So we've developed quite the, uh, the YouTube playlist on how to use accessibility. So narration, Microsoft Teams for inclusive education, uh, remote work with sign language, right? Remote work with inclusive collaboration, live captions. These are great. Like, and they're very detailed, by the way. They go for about an hour each. If you're looking for that deep dive and you're a visual learner like I am, maybe you might use Copilot in combination. There's some great uh, sessions to watch. We also have a do-it-yourself so if you're a keen aesthetic learner with uh, Microsoft, like I am, I like to get hands-on and find out where an immersive reader is and press read aloud all the time. We actually have these um, hands-on right uh, sessions. They're much smaller. They're like, how do I use keyboard shortcuts? Or how do I change my screen size? Or how do I turn on closed captions? Plenty of visual aids for you there as well. Now, we also have the accessibility at a glance uh, series and they are a number of videos just checking time there they are a number of videos that you have access to which is a different set of accessibility uh, videos now I'm showing you all this because obviously everyone has different needs some people are visual some people like deep dives some people like the short sharp just show me how to do it um, I'll sort the rest out so there's a number of different resources that we could have here a lot of staff love this one so someone asked this about today, you know, immersive reader, PDF. We actually have uh, PDF accessibility training. Even though PDFs technically aren't our product, uh, we recognize a lot of users use PDFs in the industry. So we have uh, PDF accessibility training videos as well, right? That you can bring up and, you know, how to use accessibility in PDF, how to use bookmarks and headings and all sorts of wonderful things. <clears throat> We have Office Accessibility, which I have been talking about today. Um, we have our Office Accessibility Center, our Accessibility Capabilities in Office, our templates I mentioned earlier today, and our Office Accessibility Video Training Series. Ah, resources, more resources than we have time for in a year. Uh, and these are great, like making your content more accessible. How do you get started? How do you create accessible emails? Let's face it, we all use emails at some point. How to create accessible PowerPoints, Word documents. Um, and these are videos specific to those products, which are really great. Really recommend watching them. Uh, Windows 10, I have a list of Windows 10 accessibility uh, options to help you if you're a Windows 10 user. And uh, I have some information around AI for accessibility and some of the projects we're working around epilepsy, neurodiversity, which aren't quite obviously fully out yet, but uh, it's good to watch that space if you're investing Microsoft as your platform. The learning tool flyer that you saw at the start is here, um, our playlist that we have there. And I'm just doing a shout out to uh, Be My Eyes, which is one of our partners that I'm sure you've heard of that provides visual accessibility aids, but they are also introducing Be My AI, very similar to what I demonstrated with Copilot, specific to those that have um, low vision or visual needs. They are doing a beta test right now, if you're interested in signing up. Sorry, August, I should say, which is pretty close. If you're interested in signing up to Be My AI, if you have a relationship or maybe you've utilized be my eyes before but thank you everyone look at that just on time um thank you for having me i do apologize if um uh you know we we went a little bit too fast or a little bit too slow i apologize to the closed captioner at some points i think i did quite good in slowing myself down to be honest but i would like to thank you for for having me and taking the time out of your day to learn more about where we are and what we're doing 
and accessibility. And I really hope that uh, this presentation will be useful for you after the fact. The video will be useful. And you walked away today knowing you can make uh, different elements of Office, Windows, um, Copilot in your pocket to help you in a more accessible world. So thank you so much. I uh, appreciate you having me. Thank you, Kylie and, and the team for putting this together and inviting me back. Really appreciate it. Excellent. Um, so, yes, we will be putting the links up on the website um, so that have gone into the chat so people can, um, you know, if they didn't get a chance to pull them out of the chat, they'll be made available. Just a couple of quick questions. One was around, is there any work being done on the Nepalese language, bringing that into the suite of translator, et cetera? Do you know? Good question. You know, I, I get asked questions all the time. The great, I can tell you this, the great thing about accessibility at Microsoft, we're based in Sydney right? So we're not going international for these. And I feed those those language requests to the team. Um, they put it on a, a bit of a, a waiting list because they have to incorporate it through our language model. Um, but I'm happy to feed that through and find out a timeline because sometimes they're already there being processed and see if it's coming August or by end of year. Um, so yeah, happy to, to, to get a list. Maybe if you email the coordinators, they can yep. compose a list and I can go Fact check whether Excellent. they're cool. uh, Other one was around the transcript from the, the um, can transcripts from pre present live um, be saved, like from the PowerPoint? So, uh, from translate live, oh, from PowerPoint live, yeah. that is on the roadmap coming out. That is a big request. Originally, we didn't think uh, users wanted to keep it. Um, some teachers voiced they didn't want the transcript to to go in anyone's hands. So what we decided is to allow the user, the presenter, to pick a toggle to enable the ability of the transcript to be downloaded for that session or not. And that's that's the compromise we came to. It's <laughs> okay. in the end. Yeah, no, it's quite challenging, isn't it, when that's um, brought up. Um, and so someone was talking about translate in a noisy environment, like how good is translation in noisy environments? I love these questions because I just feel like I have all the answers today. You, well, it's either that or you're asking the right questions. Um, I'm going to put a, a news article up, uh, maybe after the fact, about how we're using noise cancellation for one of our learning accelerators. It's called Reading Progress. Um, we're bringing noise, AI noise cancellation to dictation and to our learning accelerators, which is students using dictation. Um, so it can identify your voice in a cloud, it was designed for classrooms, basically, yeah. with 30 kids in a room. Um, that is rolling out between now and the end of the year. I think they're said in certain languages. But basically, it will identify your voice that you're speaking to and the AI will attempt to cancel any other voices. that So you don't have words popping up all over the place. Um, so that's really exciting. I think it does a very good job right now if you go and test it. Not perfect. This yeah, next step will really improve um how that works right. so what's we um had a meeting yesterday in um microsoft teams and the presenters um audio was terrible so all of us actually had to turn her sound down but the automatic translation actually got pretty much word perfect so that was right. pretty amazing so you realize yeah how far we're coming so andrew thank you so much um it's absolutely amazing great questions for everybody thank you all for participating um, and I think it's one of those videos that people will watch over and over again and um, and probably spend a couple of weeks going into all the resources. That's absolutely brilliant. So thank you to, for your time and for Microsoft sharing your, the knowledge so freely with us. It's really um, wonderful. We've got a couple of webinars coming up in the future. The team will put some links into the chat, I'm sure. And also we're um, asking for people to... Um, Put in a um, put it um, do a survey. We'll put in um, into the emails that get sent out. If you can fill that survey in, I really appreciate it. Um, so thank you everybody, and thank you for Amy for captioning. Absolutely wonderful job as always. Okay, take care everybody. Have a great. Um, is it a Wednesday? I think so. Have a great Wednesday. Take care. Bye. Thanks everyone.